In this presentation, I will show you how to find the maximum and minimum resultants when given two forces. Look closely at this animation. The red arrow in this picture represents the resultant of the blue and yellow forces. Notice that the resultant gets larger when the angle between the forces approaches zero, and the resultant gets smaller when the angle approaches 180 degrees. The more the two forces act in the same direction, the greater the resultant, and the more the forces act in opposite directions, the smaller the resultant. The maximum resultant occurs at zero degrees, and the minimum occurs at 180 degrees. We can use this fact to find the range of possible resultants for any two forces. If 100 newton and 30 newtons act on a body, what is the range of possible resultants? We can find the maximum and minimum resultant by adding and subtracting the, the forces given. When we add the two forces, we find the maximum resultant is 130 newtons. When we subtract the two forces, we find the minimum resultant is 70 newtons. Since these values are the maximum and minimum resultants, we also know that every force in between these two values is possible. To summarize, to find the smallest resultant that two forces can have, we subtract the forces. To find the largest resultant that two forces can have, we add the two forces. Before we go any further, I want to define a word you will be seeing in this presentation and, in, and problems you will see in your homework questions. This word is concurrent. Forces are concurrent when they act on the same point. All these problems show concurrent forces. Here is an example of two forces that are not acting concurrently. The left force is acting at the center of the box and the force on the right is not. You are looking at four pairs of forces that act concurrently on a body. Which pair of concurrent forces may have a resultant of 20 newtons? In order to find out which pair of forces could have a force of 20 newtons, I need to find the range of possible resultants for each pair of forces. The way to, that we do that is by adding the two forces to find the maximum resultant and subtracting the two forces to find the minimum. The only pair that could have a resultant of 20 newtons is choice B. So why is the answer choice B? The answer is clear where we find the range of possible resultants for all four choices. Remember, once we find the minimum and maximum resultants by adding and subtracting the forces given, every force in between these extremes is possible. Now look at the range of possible resultants for all the other choices. 20 does not fit within any of these ranges. Here is a good example for you to test what you know about angles and resultants. Two forces act on a body. Rank the angles between the forces below from the largest resultant to the smallest. The largest resultant occurs when the forces act in the same direction. This occurs at zero degrees. Therefore, choice A is the largest. As the angle between the forces approaches 180 degrees, the resultant decreases. When you rank the resultants from largest to smallest, you get the following results. Let's rank the resultants that will be produced by these forces from largest to smallest. The closer an angle is to zero degrees, the larger the resultant. The closer an angle is to 180 degrees, the smaller the resultant. A 5 newton force and a 7 newton force act concurrently on a point. As the angle between the forces increase from 0 degrees to 180 degrees, the magnitude of the resultant of the two forces changes from, since the first angle is 0 degrees, the resultant is found by adding the forces. This gives us a resultant of 12 newtons. The last angle is 180 degrees. When we subtract the forces, we get 2 newtons. The only choice that starts out at 12 newtons and ends at 2 newtons is choice D. You have learned in this presentation that you can find the range of possible resultants of two forces by adding the forces to find the maximum result and subtracting the forces to find the minimum. All forces between the maximum 
and minimum values represent resultants that can be reduced by the forces given. This is the end of my presentation on finding the range of possible resultants.